Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you are a Fire TV user and you are in the US, then you will already be aware of a feature that was made available on Fire TV devices in 2019 that gives you access to a live TV tab. Now over the next few weeks, this feature is going to be rolled out to Fire TVs in the UK, regardless of whether or not you have the updated layout on your device. If you'd like to find out more about the new life feature that's being added and rolled out, or if you already have it but are not sure how to use it, then stick with me and in this video I'll be taking a look at what it is, how it works, and how to use and modify it. So when you're ready, grab your remote control and let's get started. If you already have the live feature available to you on your Fire TV device, then you should now be seeing the live option in the centre of your home screen or at the top of your screen, depending on what Fire TV device you have. If not, and it's been a while since you restarted or powered off your Fire Stick, you can check for updates manually. To do this, go to Settings, My Fire TV, Click on About and then click on Check for Updates. If an update is available, then you can follow the on-screen instructions to update. Once you have this update, your Amazon Home screen will now look something like this, depending on your device, with the addition of the Live tab on the Home menu. This new Live tab on our Home screen gives us a centralised location to enable us to access live TV apps and live TV streams faster over the internet without the need for a free view aerial. When you do click over to it, we can see that there's a guide you can click on to view all of your live TV channels and browse programs coming up in the next two weeks. Then underneath that, you've got some featured live TV apps, which if you're in the UK, you will be familiar with BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub, All4 and My5. But if you're looking at this live tab in the US, then your live TV app list is going to look a lot different to this. Then underneath that, you can scroll down to see some more highlighted channels from public broadcasters, and you can add prime video channels that you subscribed to. And under that, we can access the guide, favorite, parental controls, and settings. Now again, depending on your location and what apps for live TV you already have installed, this will determine what you can see here. At the moment in the UK, the selection is very limited as there are only a few applications and services that are currently able to integrate with this Live TV tab. I've so far found that in the UK, Pluto TV, My5, Red Bull TV, Twitch and TV Player can integrate with the Live TV tab. When you click on the guide and take a look, it is a full TV guide that looks really nice and gives you all of the information that you need. The channel name, date, time, and a description of the highlighted show as well shows at the top. Scrolling through the guide seems to be quite fast and responsive and works really well, but when you select anything from this guide, it does seem to be a little slow to open up the correct app and start streaming that channel. However, it works and it works well. All of the channels listed in this guide should automatically pull in information from live TV channels and apps that you have installed that are compatible, so you shouldn't need to do anything extra to get this feature working. Just make sure that if the live TV channel or app requires you to be logged in, then you have already entered your login information. If you don't know what apps and Prime Video channels are compatible, you can check the pinned comment down below where you can find a list of services, apps and channels that can be integrated with the Live TV Guide. However, you can manually change what's shown here and adjust it to your own preferences. Whilst in this guide, you can press the Menu or Options button on your remote control and from here you can access and manage your favourites. You can filter the channels to show from a specific app only, and you can easily add any highlighted channels to your favourites. From here, you can also select the option to manage your channels. If there are channels that you never watch or aren't interested in, you can choose to exclude them from this list 
by pressing the play pause button on each channel that you want to hide. This lets you customize the guide to your tastes and interests based on what you watch. There are further settings you can access for live TV by going to settings and selecting live TV. In here, you can view and manage your favorite channels and there are parental controls that you can turn on so you can restrict access to certain content and manage those settings with a pin. And there's a setting to sync your sources. If you find that a compatible application you've installed for live TV doesn't automatically integrate with the live TV feature and the guide, you can come here to check if the app is listed and then you can choose to sync the sources and import the channels that way instead. But only compatible apps will be listed here. If the app that you've installed isn't listed, then the app is not compatible and you will not be able to use it together with the live TV option and guide. Amazon is working to increase the number of apps and services that are available with this live TV feature. Now, one of the questions that I was asked about this update is, does the addition of the live feature slow down or have any impact on my device? I've got two Fire Stick lights that both roughly have the same number of apps and same kind of apps installed and the same amount of storage available. One of these Fire Stick lights has received the update for live TV and the other hasn't. I just ran a few very basic tests, timing how long it took to perform certain tasks and from what I saw and recorded, there was no difference whatsoever. With and without the live TV update, it took both Fire Stick lights around 18 seconds to load back up after a restart. I also tested if opening apps was slower, so I timed how long it took to open and load Netflix. I observed that it took the same amount of time on both Fire Sticks, around 15.5 seconds. I also navigated around the menus to see if there was any visible lag, but there wasn't any difference that I could identify. And at the same time, I enabled developer tools that monitored how much memory was being used when performing these tests. And I didn't see any noticeable difference in memory usage. I hope that this gives you an overview of this feature and you now know what to expect and how to use it. But if you do have any questions, then please do comment down below and I'll do my very best to help. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. And subscribe to my channel, making sure that you turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of my latest releases.